Yo, what's up, Crossroads family? Welcome back. My name is Corbin. Yeah, I'm Chris Comstock. And this is Comeback Sunday. Second Sunday of Comeback with Rev Reynolds. He got a dynamic message he's getting ready to bring. Listen, he's going to bring it. Talking about Moses today, yes. it's going to be incredible. And listen, I know y'all came back last week. Worship was amazing. Mm. Najee's back at it again this week with the band. It is going to be an incredible Sunday. Yo, what's up, family? We are so glad to see you guys, but we have some quick announcements for you. First things first, now you have to RSVP to get in church. Like, baby, we doing it big now, all the way around. But no, all seriousness, please make sure you RSVP for us. Yeah, it just helps us know and prepare for who's coming and how to get all the seats ready so that way we know that you have a seat. When you get in here, you can get in here with your family and get seated really quickly. Remember, we have three services you can choose from. Two here at Douglasville, 930, 1130, one at Carrollton at 1030. So we want you guys to be a part of that RSVP. And hey, here's something we learned last week. Oh, this is crazy. Yes. I didn't think anything of this. We figured it out last week. If you have some asthma or breathing problems because mm -hmm. we sanitize this room in Douglasville after that first service, uh, you might want to come to first service instead because we already sanitized it for Sunday. It's already ready, so yes. that smell will be gone. We did realize that. So, hey, come to first service, get in, get ready, get your day started right on Sunday, and get ready for what God's going to do in your life this week. Well, family, check this out. We have some tips for you. Safety precautions. Safety. Listen, first things first, air fives. Whoop, whoop. Listen, make sure you bring a mask, because I know y'all, like, y'all love being in each other's faces, but we can't be spreading <laughs> that stuff. And what else we have, Chris? Listen, that's, I didn't even bring my mask. The corporate is more ready than I am, but please do. We're not asking you to wear it all the time, because we know it's tough to breathe, but please make sure you wear it. Our volunteers are going to be wearing them all the time to make sure that you are safe. Hey, and here's some other things. Maybe you got to go to the bathroom. Guess what? we got people in there wiping everything down. We're sanitizing this room between every time you walk in the doors. We are making sure, first and foremost, that you are safe and that yeah. you are ready here to meet with Jesus and we are excited about what he's going to do. Family, we have to celebrate what took place here last Sunday. It was bananas. It was crazy. But most important, two people gave their life to Jesus. Come That's on. what this is all about. What else we got, Chris? Listen, it was incredible. We had so many of you in here for the first time last week. We saw new faces all over the place. Hey, if you were here even last week or maybe here this week for the first time, we'd love for you to text because we don't want to give you any paper. We don't want to spread no germs. So if you'll just text... X Roads guest to 94000. There'll be a form for you, and our friends will follow up with you right away, let you know that we were excited you're here and see how we can serve you. And also, listen, 
I hope you guys catch this real quick. During this pandemic, we have served over 3,000 families mm. through our pantry. Incredible. Can we make some noise Come with on. Jesus right that when you went? I smack one of y'all. I'm sorry. Y'all can't do that. <laughs> but listen, we are celebrating what God has been doing through the church. As buildings was closed down, the church was not closed right. down. And it's all due to your giving. So today, as you prepare to give, I want you to understand this. Lives are truly being changed mm. through your giving. And so today, as you prepare to give, give as a cheerful giver, knowing that your dollars are being used to change people's lives. Church, we have an incredible opportunity this week to highlight one of our partner countries, and that is India. We have a great missionary over there, M. Daniel, who is seeing God work in a mighty way. Even in the midst of this pandemic, yeah. God is moving. Uh, they're seeing five partner churches right now, over 370 house churches, which is incredible right now. What else what is also, going on? Also, man, they have 17 student pastors. Shout wow. out to the student Come pastors on. that are in Bible college right now. We're helping out four orphanages, serving over 460 wow. children right now. God is doing a lot in India, and there's so much information that we could tell you, but I want you to check out the link below so you can know more about what God is doing through Crossroads in India. That's awesome. Hey family, I want to remind you guys that we're still partnering with PRC. Last year they saved over 960 lives mm -hmm. and Crossroads was a big donor in it. It's incredible to see. And PRC isn't just for that. It's also for fathers who might need counseling. It's for mm -hmm. single dads who might need help. It is across the board one of the great opportunities we have to serve and to give towards. And so if you want to give towards PRC Medical to see God continue to use them in a mighty way, you can give right here in the link below and let them see that Crossroads is not about to stop us uh, saving lives and seeing women and men come back together and, and see families restored. It is an incredible opportunity, church. Hey, church, as we've already heard, so many lives have been fed, changed, transformed. We've seen God work, and it's because you and your faithfulness to give. And so we just want to prepare your heart for what God's about to do here and your opportunity to respond to that through your giving. Mm -hmm. And so there are a couple ways you can do that located here on the screen. We just want to prepare your heart because there will be a moment in service we can do that, but we also want you to be ready now, praying, God, what can I give? Mm -hmm. What should I give so that I can see you work in our community? Good morning. 
Crossroads Church, how are we feeling this morning? Is anybody ready to give God a praise? Let's sing together. I'll raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. Come on, y'all sing it out with me. I'll raise a
Anybody feel his love in this place? When darkness tries to roll over my bones And sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken, I won't be shaken. Let me hear y'all sing it out. Cause my feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening but rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed if you are insulted because of the name of Christ you are blessed for the spirit of glory in God rest on you if you suffer it should not be as a murderer or a thief or any other kind or criminal however 
If you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. And the reason we can say there's another in the fire because Jesus himself went through the entire fire. So he knows and empathizes with us. So your fire may be different this morning, but I assure you that Jesus is with you. Amen. Let's sing this song.
Good morning. Hey, I am a real person, if y'all didn't know. Uh, my name is Chris Comstock. I get to serve here as the spiritual growth pastor. I will be forever known at this church as the other Chris. Uh, and so I just, I accept my place uh, and that's fine. Uh, hey, if you are an online guest this morning or you are a guest in the room with us this morning, we want to welcome you to Crossroads. We're excited that you are here. We're excited you decided to walk in the room and take a step towards Jesus this morning. Uh, we would love to know that you're here. Uh, we'd love to know how to follow up with you. So if you would just, we don't have anything paper for you because, you know, we don't want to spread anything. So we have a, a number you can text, uh, 94,000. Just text Roads guest to 94,000. We would love just to follow up with you, answer any questions you might have. And really be a part of your life, hopefully, uh, in your life with Jesus. We uh, want to let you know, uh, if, in case you're in the room, next week is, is Father's Day. Now, I know, look, nobody, I say Mother's Day, right? Everybody's like, yeah, because the men don't want to go sleep somewhere else. But I say Father's Day, like, yeah, yeah, we'll just get some steaks or something. Just a reminder, next week is Father's Day. You should do something kind for your father, yeah. All right. If, if you... Um, if you need somebody to love on, I'm here. Uh, you're welcome to shower me with gifts. It's my love language, and that is totally fine as well. I also want to celebrate something really incredible, in case you guys missed it. Uh, during this uh, like uh, coronavirus pandemic, we have been able to serve in our food pantry over 3,000 families. How incredible is that? Over 3,000 families, and that is really because of the support and the offerings that you guys are able to give here at Crossroads. And we wanna invite you into that. Uh, we're not gonna pass plates or anything like that. There are boxes on the way out the door. There are ways to give online. We would love for you to continue to be a part of what God is doing here at Crossroads to feed the least of these. I love that passage in Matthew 25 where uh, Jesus is talking to his disciples. He's like, I, you know, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was naked and you clothed me and all the, and they go, well, Jesus, when were you ever that? He's like, no, no, no. Like whatever you've done for the least of these you've done for me. We have an opportunity as a church. Maybe you can't serve in person, but you can with your money. And we want you to know that your money goes towards serving those in need. And so we want to be uh, the hands and feet of Jesus to this community and beyond. It's a really great opportunity to do that. I want to pray for us. I'm going to pray for Rev as he comes up here. I do want us to just pray. My wife and I were talking last night. And I'm sure we're not blind or oblivious to what's going on in our country and in our world right now. Uh, but I just, as a pastor, like my wife looked at me last night and just said, I'm, I'm really scared right now. 
Like, I'm just really scared for what our country is becoming, the division that is arising, the, the fighting that is occurring. Like, there is so much brokenness in our country right now. And I would be remiss if we didn't just pause this morning as the church and beg God to move. If we didn't pause this morning and say, God, division, no more. We need to be begging for unity in our country. And that's all we want to do this morning. We want to, we want to pray that God would work. He would change lives. He would change hearts. He would change minds. That we would become a people of unity and not division. So I'm going to pray for us. And then Rev's going to come up here and he's going to bring an incredible... I, don't, I said I wasn't going to say incredible. He's going to bring an okay message that will get you to next Sunday when the real pastor comes back. And uh, I'm just, I'm ju- come on. It's fine, guys. It's fine. Like, we, we like each other. Uh, but, man, let me, just, let me just pray. Jesus, we are ever grateful for what you're doing in this church, what you're doing in this community through Crossroads and the other churches in this community. Jesus, we ask right now, we, we beg right now, God, that you would work in a mighty way, in a way that we look back and say, it was only you that moved. It wasn't us. It wasn't anything else that we could do, but it was you. It was your spirit. It was your power. It was your might that changed our world. God, may we be a generation that sees change occur and not be complicit on the sidelines, but be active to see you move. Jesus, may we be on our knees begging for it. We are thankful for your word. We're thankful for Rev and his heart for you. God, his heart uh, for this church, his heart for this community. Uh, God, I pray that you would work in his life today. Hide him behind your cross. Allow his word to be yours. And Father, we ask that you would do this all in your name. Amen. 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 Uh, Let's welcome the next comedian to Crossroads. (laughs) Who, Who hired that guy? I don't know, but I know who's firing him tomorrow. So yeah, my name is Chris Reynolds. Uh, I'm the executive pastor here at Crossroads, and it's been a minute since I got up here and preached. Uh, So I'm excited to take the opportunity, especially in a time like this. I go back and forth, and and I keep reading up on all these things and watching too much of what's going on. And and there is this gospel that's being presented out there that's not of Jesus. And it's amazing. Because if you've never heard me preach or get up on this stage, uh, I will stay here all day until we all figure out there's only one truth that we're going to live by at this church. And so we're in this series called The Comeback, and we kind of uh, took a different direction because we do want to be sensitive to what's happening in our world. And and we feel like if anybody has a voice to address these types of things, it should be God's church. We are built upon love, not division. I don't care what history has happened in the past. I care, but not what the church has failed at because we have a time, and our generation has a moment. We won't let the church be a part of the hate any longer. We will only be a part of the love. In my opinion, you don't have to go down that road with me, and that's okay. Because when I go to Jesus, I stand by myself. But I know what I'm accountable for. And so this morning, when we talk about the comeback, and we talk about whatever character, I could pull so many things out of this book, but they said I got 30 minutes. Jesus is going to come back, I hope, at 30 minutes. That's the only way I'm hitting that clock. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But I thought about this. In fact, we're doing this thing called Nine at Nine. If you haven't been on Facebook, praise you, Lord, stay off. But if you get on at one moment at 9 a.m. in the morning on Crossroads Facebook, we take an opportunity, we take nine minutes. Can you believe it? The communicators of this church spend nine minutes to tell you truth. Okay, it's like 20, but you only have to watch nine, all right? It was a cute concept that Comstock brought up and I was like hey we're gonna do nine minutes you should have did like 12 minutes at 12 and I started thinking maybe we need to go military time I don't know (laughs) but I I I went through this story the other day and in fact I got to be honest with you I actually preached a a piece of this message several years back and and many of you will probably remember it Um, and if not that's okay statistics say You don't make it to Tuesday with this truth, but uh, we're going to hope that one thing today, I'm going to say it as many times as I can, that you walk away with it. 
But I had to bring this back up. I just kept thinking about what's going on. Had the opportunity to share with uh, Chick-fil-A Inc. Because my wife works there. I had an opportunity to do this at 9 and 9. And I just kept feeling like God just keeps bringing this story back of one of the greatest comebacks in the Old Testament. I love the Old Testament. I know a lot of people shy from that because there's a lot of history and, and Jesus comes way after. But to me, the Old Testament, man, sets this foundation that just proves who Jesus is. And that God never had a plan B. He always had a plan A. And we were in mind. And a lot of times as a pastor, when I think about this particular message, a lot of times I sit down with people all the time and we have these conversations about the journey, about the hard times, the past. There are many times, and there are many of you guys in the room or maybe you're watching online, that you get caught up on who you were. You get caught up on this journey or the hard times in this world, what you have done or maybe what you haven't done or, or you know, what is going on circumstantially. It's another day around these parts these days that it begins to tear apart who we are and who God created us to be. And we can't seem to focus beyond who we are and understand that who we were and who we are isn't I mean, it isn't the big deal. It's who we're becoming and God created us for that he's calling us to. But I sit time after time and I see people measure their worth. I see a lot of people feel like they got to come to this place perfect. If you had to come to this place perfect, if you know me personally, you know I would be out. Because we're all in this journey together. So much so that I believe this story we're going to talk about, and we're going to be talking about Moses. If you listen to those videos before, there's no secret. I don't land on this like, ta-da. No, we're going to be talking about Moses and his encounter with God. And if you have your Bibles with you in your living rooms this morning, or maybe you're here in the big room, we're going to be in Exodus chapter 3 and 4. We're going to cover a lot of verses in a little time. And so when I start talking like the micro machine, man, you know who that is and you old, then you know I, I'm seeing that clock up there start flashing at me. But before we start reading, I want to give you a little backstory to make sure you are familiar with Moses. See, there was this time when Moses, when he was born, you need to know that most of his life he began hiding from his call. He kind of always knew, he kind of always felt that he was created for a purpose, but he was always running from his call, so much so that he ends up camouflaging himself in a foreign land amongst foreign people. And the backstory here is there was this man, Pharaoh, in Egypt, and he had the Hebrew people enslaved for like almost 400 years. And we see Moses' mother, if you were to read back Exodus 1 and 2, and if, listen, I'm not going to pretend that you know where that's at. If you don't know where Exodus is and you brought a Bible, it's like the second book. So flip to the front and just start waving. You'll get there. But we see Moses' mother do something that's just unspeakable. There is this moment where Pharaoh says, hey, all the Hebrew boys, we need to kill them. We need to wipe them out. We need to get rid of them. And so Moses' mother is trying to figure out how to save her little boy. So she does what is just seems insane. And she puts him in this basket and sends him down this river. That seemed insane until about three months ago when I was stuck at home in, in this pandemic with my three children. <laughs> and I would be lying to you if I didn't think about, let's just get him a new family. <laughs> that's, that's, not, that's not okay. They'll scratch that for the tape. <laughs> You're lying if you didn't think that too. <laughs> Come on. My kids are seven, five, and three. Praise the Lord. And so Moses goes floating down this river, and he comes up on, I mean, out of all people, Pharaoh's daughter. And what I love about this is we always skip over this part of the story. We're always like, I mean, yeah, that's great. We focus on mama sending down baby boy down the river. But what's amazing to me is God began to infiltrate Pharaoh's ruling with a little Levite child. 
Way before God was ever going to call Moses to do what we'll talk about that he did, he began to infiltrate, to hear his people's cry. I know you sit in this room and you're asking yourself this morning, is God listening? Is he hearing my cry? And I promise you, he's working behind the scenes to do something amazing. See, God had a plan to release his people from the Egyptians. And it was through Moses. Man, how great is God's love? He knew how this story would play out. He knew every thought Moses would have. He knew every bad decision Moses would have. He knew how long Moses would run away from him. And God still chose Moses. That brings me encouragement that God knows my story. He knows how many times I'm going to trip and fall and and walk away. But still, he stuck to the plan because he can't go back on his word because he's faithful unto himself first. That's why we're able to worship him and believe this truth. But what Moses didn't realize is God was planning Moses' big comeback. But you remember the story as Moses got older... What's crazy is Pharaoh's daughter actually got Moses back to his mother to raise him, got him old enough. Now he's living with the king or Pharaoh at the time, his daughter. Well, Moses gets a little older, and he sees this Egyptian beating up on these Hebrew boys. And see, he goes, and he ends up killing this man. He becomes a murderer. So how bad have you done things? I hear it all the time, man, God can't use me. Like, what about? And he kills this man. And then the next day we see Hebrew people. Moses is trying to stop with something else. And they come up, and Moses is trying to help out here. And they start going, who made you prince? Who? And that's what just makes me sick because the church hasn't learned a lot. Because here Moses is his own people. He's out trying to fight, fight the good fight, but he can't focus at the war at hand because of friendly fire behind. We're still doing that today, church. As Christians, we can't go and be a light in the world because we're so worried about who's behind us judging us. But yet we walk the same path. We have to stop doing that. Or you don't have to. Greg probably just won't let me preach anymore, but that's okay. I promise you, we could change so much more if we rally together, link arms, and fight the good fight. Not to be right, but for what's right. So even though God raised him to deliver the Hebrew people all the way from birth, Moses ran from his calling due to the fear that he had in this world. Moses did all he could do to throw off God's plan, throw off the track that God had for him. He camouflages himself in the wilderness. And like I said, after 400 years of Egyptian bondage, God finds Moses wandering around pasture to pasture. And he has this moment with him as he's a shepherd in a foreign land from a burning bush. So we're going to throw these verses up on the screen in case you don't have scripture with you today. And it says this in Exodus 3, verse 4. When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called him from the middle of the bush. Moses, Moses, here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I'm aware of their suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. And then God tells Moses, I want you to go set my people free. Moses tries for many years to disappear, to mess up God's plan for his life, and to jack up God's purpose for his life. And he comes to God at this burning bush moment with nothing but sandals on his feet and a stick. He's equipped with nothing. And he has this encounter with God at this burning bush. And God tells him to take your shoes off. 
Now, yes, I believe wholeheartedly this is a lot about because he was in the presence of God. But I also believe wholeheartedly God was telling Moses, take your shoes off and stop running from the call that I have in your life. You are home, son. I have you here for such a time as this. This is your comeback. Doesn't this resonate with so many of us today? You know God's plan for your life. You see the narrative in Scripture, but yet due to the circumstances all around us, we run without a plan in sight. I can't do nothing by myself. My voice doesn't matter. We've gone too far. Jesus, just come back. And I believe, church, just like Moses was being told by God, that God is telling us today in this room, in your home, at every campus that we have, it's time to quit running from it. And I believe this is one reason that God wanted him to take off his shoes. He wanted him to get comfortable, stay a while. I don't want you to run from your calling. I want you to run to it because this is your time. You're home, Moses. This is a mantra and a victory march that we could all get behind. But what does it say? It says Moses was full of fear. Because a lot of times what God wants for you is bigger than you. Hadn't you felt that? Of course he's fearful. He rolled up on a bush that was on fire and it never really burned up. And an angel of the Lord speaks as God's mouthpiece to him. And he calls them to something that's so much bigger than he is. And I want you to know, church, if you feel like God is pushing you into a place that's bigger than you, you're exactly where you need to be walking. But a lot of times we can't wrap up. We can't wrap our heads around what he's asking us to do, and we run due to fear. A lot of times we become so focused on who we were that we can't see who he wants us to become. I remember this when God called me into the ministry. I remember being so fearful. If you don't know a ton about my story, we don't have that kind of time. But let me tell you, when God called me into the ministry, I was on the edge of a bed over here in Douglasville, renting an apartment uh, behind somebody's house, and I was kind of at my wit's end. I lost everything. I made some pretty jacked up decisions, and that's a whole nother ball game. And I sat there on the bed, just, God, Search me. Give me the call that you want me to do. What am I supposed to do? And I remember that night God telling me that I was going to go and I was going to preach to his people. Let me tell you how jacked up that is. I didn't grow up in church. I didn't know truth like all these pastors knew. In fact, so much so, the way I encountered Jesus for the first time is kind of a funny story. And many of y'all have heard this, but I had these boys over for my baseball team and they were spending the night. And I remember them inviting me to church, and, and that was a big deal because my family didn't go to church. We were a little hostile to organizations like this because of how we were treated. Isn't that crazy? But I remember rolling up on this church, and as we walked in, again, I don't know a lot about Jesus, but I have seen the pictures. He's got long hair. He's got a beard, olive skin. So I kind of knew the picture in my mind, and this man opens the door, and I was like, Jesus, <laughs> like not in vain, and not, yeah, this was, I was like, I remember coming home and telling my mom, like, mom, you got to come to this church, literally Jesus is opening the door at this church, <laughs> like it's funny to you because that's like ridiculous, but I'm not kidding, I literally thought Jesus went to this church in Villarica. <laughs> and I haven't met anybody since then. That hasn't been terrified about their call or walking wholeheartedly with God. You don't have to be called to preach this morning. It could be for some other field, but usually, usually you will have to confront fear if you're going to fulfill the purpose and call of God upon your life. Let me say that again. Let's throw this on the screen because you need to write this down. I want you to remember on June 14th, Lord, we are getting through this year. You will have to confront fear if you're going to fulfill God's purpose and his call upon your life. We see that in Exodus 3.11. It says, but Moses protested to God. Who am I? He says, God, I have a stutter. I can't do this. They're never going to believe me. They kicked me out of Egypt. And then Moses looks at him in verse, or chapter 4, verse 2. He says, then the Lord asked him, what is in your hand? He says, a shepherd's staff. 
Every shepherd around here has one of these. This is a normal, ordinary thing. It's just the shepherd's staff. And Moses replies, throw it down. And the Lord told him. So Moses threw down the staff and it turned into a snake. And so Moses jumps back. This is what I love about the Bible. If God can use Moses, because trust me, if I throw this stick down, it becomes a snake. Okay, God, we're about to have a different conversation. You done got weird on me. And now I'm a little fearful because I've been holding on to this thing. I'm like Tom Hanks and Wilson. I know this thing. It's been holding me up. I kind of hate this thing. And now I really hate it. There's been a snake there. He throws it down. Can you imagine this moment? He throws it. He listens to God and he backs up. But then the Lord told him, I want you to reach out and, get, and grab its tail. <laughs> yeah, you grab that thing. But what does Moses do? Moses reached out and grabbed it. And it turned back into a shepherd's staff in his hand. He gives God all these excuses. And, Mo, and it says in verse 5, perform this sign, the Lord told him. And then they will believe that the Lord, your God, the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob really has appeared to you. So look at this. He, Moses offers all these excuses. He says, no, 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 I can't do this. And God says, whoa, 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 what's in your hand? And he says, well, I've got this stick. And God says, I want you to take that stick, and he throws it on the ground. What God did is he took Moses' ordinary obedience, and he created an extraordinary return. But it took Moses letting his fingerprints off of it. It took Moses relinquishing control of this. And that is where God took this ordinary obedience and he created this extraordinary return in Moses' life. But then he tells Moses, and I believe just to see, you trust me? You trust me? He says, pick it up by the tail. Now listen, I'm not a snake handler. But I've watched a lot of Animal Planet. A lot of crocodile hunter, God rest his soul. And I could tell you this. When you go to pick up a snake, you don't reach for the tail. Because there's another end of that thing, it bites back. Right? But, but God says, I want you to reach for the tail. And, and I started thinking, why would he ask this? But it's amazing because God says, all I want you to do is grab the little end. I'll handle the big stuff. Amen. Right? If you're going to fulfill God's call, you're going to have to overcome your fear. But look how much he loves Moses, and he loves you the same. He is willing to grab the big part, the part that bites back. He just wants us to grab the small side because he wants you to play a part and be in his presence. What greater love is that? He could do this all, but he has loved us so much that he has brought us into his presence. And I'm thankful because ain't nobody want to grab the big part. We can't even handle the small stuff. We start giving up a little too quick. But you're going to have to confront fear, the very thing you've been running from. Let's take a moment on that. I want you just to close your eyes for a second. And I want you to think about what is that thing in your life you've been running from right now? What is that thing in your life that you've been fearful I want you to look at me because God knows every one of those things. And if you hear nothing else, I want you to hear that God wants me to tell you, you are going to have to confront that thing in order to be fulfilled by his purpose and his call for your life. Are you willing to pick up the little end? And you need to know that someday, even if you're not willing to encounter that today, that God's going to call you to that. And suddenly the snake becomes a stick, right? Again, he picks it up. And I see something powerful that I want you to see. The stick was so common. Like I said, every shepherd out there had one. Everybody carried one of these things around. This stick was so average. This stick was so ordinary. But when Moses relinquished control of it, that was the moment when he took what he had and he gave it to God. Suddenly it became supernatural. 
God has gifted you. God has placed you where you are. And you may look at it like, it's just ordinary, Chris. It's just nothing. It's simple. It's just all I got. But when we let go and let God, it becomes supernatural. And he uses that very thing to bring glory unto himself. And the point I want you to make, listen, church, you don't have to be sensational. Everybody thinks that God is calling the sensational, the super good looking, the super talented, the super brilliant, the super amazing. But really what God is looking for is the simple, the ordinary, the average, the common. Because sometimes all God needs is a stick. Amen? All he needs is what he has equipped you with, church. You want to see a difference? Be the difference. Even if it's only in your little circle. Because he's equipped you with something that you may feel like is so ordinary, but he has built you for something that's extraordinary. That is the gospel. And later in this book, that simple stick that he thought nothing of is what he held up. And he's standing at the Red Sea and God parts that sea because Pharaoh's coming to kill Moses and the Israelites. God says, take that stick, hold it up. He holds it up. The seas part. And why? Because all God needs is a stick. And then there's this moment where they're in the desert and the Israelites are thirsting to death. And they're at this waters of Mara and it's bitter and they can't satisfy themselves. And God says, I want you to take a branch and I want you to stir that water and it became sweet it became something that sustained them why because all God needs is a stick in fact when God chose to redeem the world he took two sticks and he hung his son on those sticks so that you and I would no longer be an ordinary but we would be extraordinary because all God needs is a stick come on it's amazing He's looking for the common, the ordinary. We have to stop, church, saying we're inadequate, that we're not smart enough. We've got to quit saying we can't do it. Quit saying it's too big and we're too small. All God needs is whatever God has equipped you with to do incredible things in this world. But it's got to be incredible things in your world first. See, it's always easy to fix everybody else. I'm looking at you, and I've got all your problems at hand. But that's easy. But in community, in this moment where we lean into each other through love, because we had no other right, all God needs is a stick, and he's evaluated every one of your excuses this morning. And he says, man, if I needed something sensational, if I needed something spectacular, I would have chosen that, but I choose you. But I think a lot of times we forget where Moses picked up that stick. A lot of times we forget because we like the the shiny moments. We forget the years on end where Moses was running in the wilderness, running from his call, had took himself to what God had planned and brought himself to a lowly shepherd. We forget that he had to have some hard times in his life in order to pick up that stick. But what I want you to know, church, is God never intends for you to go through a dry spell or a desert or through a wilderness experience like today. God will never let you go through hard times in your life without you picking up something that will bring him glory. You may be sitting here and going, Chris, I'm just desperate. I'm in need. I don't know what this season is. This can't be of God. This can't be, uh, you know, what he's called me to. Like, why is there so much hate? I have to talk to my wife, and we have to sit and look at our innocent children and explain to them how adults are acting in this world. You think that's easy? It's hard. I'm thinking, man, the fact that there is privilege and not privilege, the fact that there is an issue between white and black, the fact that we ever thought that somebody was greater than somebody else when God looked upon every one of us and we were enemies and he still gave his life for us. 
And you're sitting here thinking, Chris, I'm in this desert and I'm in this wilderness and I'm asking you, will you look back and wonder what God was handing you in this moment? Because I promise you, there will be joy that comes in the morning and he will call upon that thing that he's equipped you with. Don't miss it, church. If we go through 2020 just like we went through every other year of this hate and we can't find change, it's because you're not looking at what God is equipping you with during this season. We forget it's shiny on the other side, but Moses had to walk and walk and walk in order to pick up that stick. And if he would have never picked up that stick, he would have never set those people free. And so when you yourself or your family go through that desert or that hard time or that trial in your life, God wants to equip you with something that you're going to pick up on the way. And he is going to double back on that and use it mightily in your life. I come from a microwave generation. We skated by. We wanted everything instant. I missed a lot of journey that would have saved me a lot of grief. But I refuse to live another day without looking at, even in the mess, what God wants me to pick up. Because one day when he calls me to that thing, I don't want to be, what I do with that stick? No, I want to hold on to that. Just like it says in Exodus 4.20, it says, So Moses took his wife and sons, put them on a donkey, and he headed back to the land of Egypt, and in his hand he carried the staff of God. Amen. What is described to us as this ordinary stick became the staff of God, became the very thing that God was going to use to release his people. But Moses had to pick that up somewhere, church. How amazing is this change of tone? What Moses felt like was probably nothing, or maybe he felt like, man, this thing was just the thing that held me up. And God's saying, I know I was there with you. Amen. Man, this thing was just, it was one more thing to carry. I know, but I want you to feel this because your life is just a vapor on eternity. It may have felt big, but look at you now, Moses. Look at the comeback that I built for you. It's apparent in Moses that this is his comeback story because he mounts that donkey and he's riding into Egypt holding on that stick not like he had to carry it around but he's holding it ready to fight because he's encountered God and I just ask you church are you struggling with this day are you struggling with this life because you have missed out on your encounter moments with God the bottom line this morning is God takes the ordinary the common the average obedience and performs a supernatural. God takes the ordinary, common, average obedience and performs a supernatural with what? Your comeback in mind. God wants me just to tell you this morning, delayed obedience is still disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience. He is calling you, no matter how simple, how ordinary you feel this morning. Maybe you don't feel like you're making an impact. Maybe you don't feel like we're making an impact. I've seen many words. We're not getting anywhere. This is hopeless. What I know is the devil tried with the pandemic to isolate us. It didn't work. We came together. And so he went a little deeper with us. Will this work? No. No. It ain't gonna work. I want you to close your eyes and bow your head. And the band's gonna come out here and I'll close up. I asked you to picture that thing in your life this morning that was holding you back from living the life that God's called you to because of fear. 
you are not called to be a slave to fear any longer. You are a child of God, church. And maybe you sit in this room. Somebody drug you in here. Maybe you're a neighbor. Maybe you're a child. Maybe you've been coming for some time now. And you're tired of wonder, wandering, of wandering around the wilderness this morning. You're tired of aimlessly searching for what God has for you. And I want you to take off your shoes this morning, church, because you are home. God is ready to use you to do incredible things. He just needs your obedience. And if you don't know Jesus this morning, I want you just to pray. Say this with me, Jesus, come into my life. I don't want to wonder anymore. I want to be home with you. I am desperate for you, Jesus. I am sorry that I have ran away. But this is my comeback. Will you be my savior? Will you use my obedience? Teach me to love again. If that's your prayer this morning, everybody's got their eyes closed. I just want you to raise your hand so I can pray for you. Hey Amen, I see you. Yes, sir, I see you. Who else? Hey Amen, I see you, brother. Who else? Yes, thank you, Jesus. Yes, I see you back there, brother. Let me pray for... Father God, I just thank you that salvation is in your house. God, I thank you that it doesn't matter what this world thinks it's in control of. It doesn't matter what Satan thinks he's got away with. There are men and women in this room that have given you their heart this morning. And it took only 12 guys for us to get here. Imagine the army that you're building now of love, God. And I just thank you for their salvation. But God, I also pray, because I know when we accept you, it doesn't become rainbows. That the journey gets a little harder. But God, I thank you for the community that we have, that we don't have to do this alone. That we can stand together on the foundation that doesn't move, God. Use us. Use the sticks in our lives to bring you glory. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to worship, and then we're going to get out of here. But they're going to throw that text on there because I know many of you gave your life to Christ this morning. And I want you to text that prayer to us, let you know who you are. Because here's what I can tell you. Don't miss the opportunity. You're not meant to do this alone. And we want to be your church. You've tried everything else in the world. All of us have. And where's it gotten us? Give one shot to us. Because we will walk step by step hand in hand and carry burdens with you because I don't care what's happening out there what's happening in here is about to find its comeback and we're going to change out there but we'll change that together so stand with us this morning and let's worship the one true God Chosen me, love has. 
So if you're texting and nobody's texting you back, it's okay. Uh, so we want to put up the right one. I want to tell you the right one, which is just X Roads Prayer. So instead of chat, put X Roads Prayer to 94,000. We want to follow up with you. 
we want to walk through you with this. We, we are excited about what God's doing and don't want to miss this moment. So if you can't get any of that figured out, just find somebody with a mask on and be like, hey, I accepted Jesus and I don't know what to do. And we will help you with that too. We just want to be here for you. Uh, we're going to dismiss a little differently this morning uh, because we want to stay in compliance. We want to make sure that people aren't on top of each other. So if you guys just kind of honor that for just a moment, uh, you guys can be seated for just a second. We can turn house lights on because I can't see anything in the back. Uh, we got some hosts that are going to be sitting here. We're going to dismiss from the back to the front just so that people aren't on top of each other, if that's okay. I know this is weird and different, but please show grace in this as we try to figure it out. Um, so the back row, like the back couple sections, the host should be telling you guys when to leave. Um, I wish I had jokes to tell you guys, um, but I, I, I'm a dad. I got some dad jokes. I don't feel like that would be, we're saving that for next week. I don't want to, I don't want to spoil anything. Um, let's see. Uh, I got two kids. I don't know, Rev. You should be up here with me, man. This is weird now. I'm going to stand up here and like entertain, you know, I feel like, I feel like Maximus in the gladiator right now. Are you not entertained? All right. It's fine, guys. It's totally, totally fine. The Romans, I can talk about the Romans. I got a lot of history information. We didn't think through this part very well. So you guys are getting the, if you're online and you're still watching, you can turn it off. This is, this is where it gets weird. So I'm just going to keep it, keep it flowing though. Thank you guys so much for uh, not hating me and throwing tomatoes. That would be super awesome. Uh, you guys, yeah, the hosts are got it. They're, I don't think I need to talk through that part anymore. You guys are awesome. I can sing a song, yeah. Um, what song? What? Please exit quickly, yes. They're not right now. They're going real slow. Um, it's You're doing great. Just get off stage. That sounds, but they wanted me to sing a song. Where's Najee? You want to sing a song? Oh, Najee gone. He ran, he knew it was coming. All right. Well, hey, uh, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you guys for being uh, gracious. Oh, 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 oh.